Our next winner, 15-year-old Ryan McLaughlin, is a teenager with attitude. He's very much up for a fight, but you'll be pleased to hear it's for all the right reasons. My name is Ryan McLaughlin from Glasgow. You could help. Help me. In 2007, Ryan McLaughlin's life was turned upside down when his mum Kirsten was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. There was a feeling of anger. I knew there was no cure. I just couldn't do anything. And I wanted to do so much, anything for my mum. It was just a complete shock to me, um, shock to the family. Crash by ball up, we've got a disease and there's no cure for it. MS is a progressive disease affecting the nervous system and symptoms include crippling pain and spasms. Hearing my scream and pain at night, it's, it's such a drastic change. Things got emotional sometimes, so a good cry upstairs in, in a bedroom somewhere was, was often um, a good solution. But there was a glimmer of hope during a family holiday when sunshine, which helps the body produce vitamin D, seemed to improve Kirsten's condition. Back home, Ryan got on the net. He did lots of research to find out that there is a very strong correlation between the lack of exposure to sun and the potential link with multiple sclerosis. After watching Braveheart, it really stood me on because there's a phrase, and I say it all the time, would you exchange all the days from this day to that to fight? That was what triggered a response in him, and he came to me and he says to me, Dad, I'm going to fight. Ryan had found his inspiration, and in 2009, he launched his MS awareness campaign, Shine on Scotland, and took his fight to the Scottish Parliament, calling for free vitamin D for children and expectant mothers. The walk to Parliament dressed as uh, Braveheart, uh, with about two or three hundred Bravehearts behind them, it certainly caught the public imagination. I was trying to show politicians that children did care about their health. We're not going to sit in our backsides and let diseases destroy our families. The government took notice. Under pressure from Ryan, they agreed to review their entire information strategy regarding the benefits of vitamin D. And he didn't stop there. This year, he brought together experts from around the world at an international summit to continue the debate. He's made uh, politicians, scientists sit up and take notice, and it's really incredible for somebody so young. Ryan continues to work tirelessly, campaigning and fundraising, in the hope that one day he'll win his fight for free vitamin D. We are on the right track, and we're on the right track because Ryan has led the way. I could stop one person from getting MS, that would mean the world to me. He's one in a million, he really is, um, and he's, he's mine. Now, before we meet Ryan, let's see how he found out that he'd won his award. He was at the Scottish Parliament in Edinburgh to update politicians on his campaign. But he was to be joined by someone who's not altogether used to parliamentary protocol. Watch out for Ryan's little brother Darren. It was a bit of a surprise for him as well. We have waited 60 years, 60 years for a glimmer of hope for preventing MS. So now let's send out a strong message across the globe that Scotland is taking strong action to look after its people. Hello. Ryan, you are a bad boy. <laughs> you were in that speech. I thought you were a proper politician. That's why. <laughs> oh, automatically. Hello, I'm Russell. It's lovely oh, to meet you, Ryan. The reason I didn't immediately come up to you because your oratory and rhetoric were so skillful and brilliant. I assumed this was the Scottish Prime Minister. <laughs> I'm here, mate, because you've won a Pride of Britain award because of your fantastic work and campaigning. I have done my trousers. Uh, many things. But most importantly, this invitation to come to the uh, Pride of Britain, where you will receive your award. Congratulations, Ryan. Baron, you've got your work cut out. What's your campaign going to be? <laughs> now, come round, of course, this fantastic young man. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please meet Ryan McGoslin.
good in that kilt. Thank you very much. <laughs> you certainly do. Brave heart. Now, this all started obviously because of your lovely mum and when she developed multiple sclerosis. Where is she now? Where is she? Say hello to your mum. Hello, mum. Hello. How is she now? She's, she's okay now. She's um, had her ups and downs over the last few days with the stress, but um, she's a fighter and uh, she always will be. And she's the inspiration that I always have, and I'm so grateful for it. your mum really who's inspired you isn't it to see her in such pain and such agony to stop anybody else going it, through it it was such a difference i mean and my mum was such a happy go lucky and to anything for everyone to not being able to walk and speak it was horrific and we didn't know how to react so we, we fought back we wish you all the luck with your campaign because if you do manage to get all that you want you hope that with this link that possibly exists between vitamin D and the sunlight and, and, and the uh, onslaught of uh, multiple uh, sclerosis, that you will be able to stop some and prevent some getting this disease. That's right. Isn't yeah, it? as I said before, one person from getting multiple sclerosis is, is just monumental. I don't care if it's one person or a million because it's such a horrific disease. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish, um, wish it upon my worst of enemies. And, it's not only multiple sclerosis anymore, it's cancers, it's leukaemia, a whole list of autoimmune diseases as well. And we need this and we won't stop fighting. I think you will be the Scottish Prime Minister. <laughs> Presidential with your award, obviously we needed to find somebody who'd appreciate your fighting spirit. So we round it up, a boardroom brawler. Yes, Ryan? Lord Sugar is ready to see you now. Well, Ryan, if I, if I didn't know better, I would have thought I'd sent you out there on one of my tasks. <laughs> um, running around there in the streets and lobbying the uh, Scottish government and talking to all those scientists and getting this vitamin D, such a high profile, it's a fantastic job, a lot of determination, you don't ever seem to take no for an answer, right? No. Good. Listen, we've got the, uh, we've got the Deputy Prime Minister here tonight, um, do you fancy having a go at reduction in VAT after January? <laughs> I thought I'd ask, anyway. <laughs> but listen, um, young man, great. Mm. great determination and a very, very well and deserved award for you. Well, very well done, young man. Maybe that you could, um, you know. Do you, want, do you want a job, son? Of <laughs> <laughs> Scottish branch. <laughs> Scottish branch. Thank you very much, Lord Sugar, and congratulations and shine on Scotland. Congratulations. <laughs> Now, we may not all look back on our school days fondly, but we can all remember a great teacher, those individuals who inspired us with their passion. And I've no doubt that the children of Ripple Primary School in Barking will remember their teacher, Rachel Dixon. But before we meet Rachel and hear her story, let's see how she heard the news she'd won the award from hip-hop group N-Dubs. You just need to... Okay, we've got real problems now. We heard you were a really good samba band, but we're actually here today to see Miss Dixon. 
Me. Speak to you. Yeah. yeah. Let me. Okay. I've got some news for you. Okay. You have won Best Teacher at the oh Pride of Britain Award this year, and oh you've been God. invited to come and hear the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> and here is why Rachel won. Barking, a multicultural London suburb with high unemployment and low expectation. But in local school Ripple Primary, there's something to be very proud of. Their Samba Band. The band was originally set up with additional funding from the government which was given to deprived areas. I think it's important for children to feel like they're part of something and the band really does make them feel they're part of something special. And the teacher behind the band is Rachel Dixon. Rachel's been involved right from the word go um, and has dedicated a massive amount of time to making sure it's been a success over a number of years. Safe place to come to. They're not outside in the street, so it does give them the opportunity to do something positive. When I play, I feel happy. As soon as you get into it, you like just explode, sort of thing. There's nothing better than seeing people achieve, and their self-esteem goes through the roof. Last year, the band were presented with a prestigious Music for Youth award and they've landed some pretty impressive gigs. We were asked to go to the Albert Hall last year. That was amazing. To be invited a second year running is pretty much unheard of for a school, so we're over the moon. To walk in, 8,000 seats sitting there, this huge cavernous area, their eyes were just so wide. I've never seen them that silent, to be honest. And Samba's not the only string to Rachel's bow. In the classroom, she's getting impressive results too. She also leads literacy for the school and her input has been fundamental in uh, raising results across a, a number of years. So we're up there with national averages where we weren't before. The dedication, the time, the energy is absolutely wonderful. She's an amazing lady and we are, we are all very proud of her in Ripple. Miss Dixon, please welcome the Ripple Primary Samba Band! <laughs> <laughs> 